it's coming down from here. Anyhow, let's review the arteries very briefly. This right here, this is the aortic arch. The aortic arch. And there are two, in the cat, there are two arteries branching off the aortic arch. In the humans, there's three. That's us. There's the brachiocephalic artery and the left subclavian artery. In the cat, the brachiocephalic artery trifurcates. <laughs> it divides into three. And you can see these three. It looks like a fork or a trident. And uh, the first one here is the right subclavian artery. And you can follow that right subclavian into the arm. We'll come back to that in a moment. This next one here, the middle one, is the right common carotid artery. You can follow that. It's carrying oxygenated blood up to the right side of the head. This one right here is the left common carotid artery. And you can follow it up, and it's carrying oxygenated blood to the left side of the head. So those three come, uh, are the formed from the brachiocephalic artery. This is the left subclavian artery on the cat, and this goes into the left arm. Now, in, in uh, humans, in us, the only difference between us and the cat is that instead of the brachiocephalic dividing into three arteries like it does in the cat, in us it divides into just these first two, the right, com uh, right subclavian and the right common carotid. This left common carotid comes off directly off the aortic arch, just like the left subclavian artery does. If we again follow this right subclavian artery into the right arm, again, once it reaches the armpit area, right about here, we would call it the axillary artery. So this would be the right axillary. And as it gets into the uh, actual arm itself, the arm proper, it would be called the right brachial artery. This right here is the biceps brachii muscle. He's uh, working it right now. Right? <laughs> He's working it. That's the cat. So this would be the brachial artery. So uh, the uh, brachial artery is right next to the brachial vein and the axillary artery right about here. Here's the axillary vein. The uh, subclavian artery right about here and here's the subclavian vein right next to it. So that's a, a brief review. Just a couple last points. Uh, this is the trachea, the windpipe. Right above it is the larynx. And the, what we notice here is there's an upper cartilage called the thyroid cartilage and a lower, narrower one called the cricoid cartilage. And these are two cartilages of, are of the larynx. So the proper description is the thyroid cartilage of the larynx and the cricoid cartilage of the larynx. Right underneath the trachea is a flat muscular tube, and that's the esophagus. That's a... Uh, pulled it out, but it would normally sit right underneath the trachea, but that's the muscular esophagus. This is a brief review of the hepatic portal circulation. This cat has been specially injected to show the hepatic portal circulation very clearly. This is the hepatic portal vein right here, carrying uh, blood from the digestive tract to the liver. It is formed principally from two other veins. This, is, this one right here in yellow is the superior mesenteric vein. And incidentally, right next to it in red is the superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric is associated with the small intestine. So you can see these are the mesenteries. You can see in red the superior mesenteric branches of the superior mesenteric artery. And in yellow, branches of the superior mesenteric vein. Uh, the other branch is the splenic vein. This is the spleen right here. This is the spleen located in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. And uh, coming off the spleen in yellow is the splenic vein. Incidentally, right next to it in red is the splenic artery, which is a branch off the celiac artery. But anyhow, this splenic vein, follow it, it joins with the superior mesenteric vein from the small intestine, and together they form the hepatic portal vein. For those of you who have Professor Fink's lecture outline, it's page 014. <laughs>
available now at a moderate a nominal price. One, one more thing here. This, this shows very nicely also not only the spleen, but the pancreas. And the pancreas, very clearly here, kind of has this uh, uh, cottage cheese-like texture uh, that maybe the uh, camera is able to pick up uh, this kind of texture of the uh, pancreas. And, uh, of course, this is located right underneath the stomach. This is the stomach right here. And uh, since we're just looking at this, this is the abdominal aorta in red, right next to it, the inferior vena cava. And we can see this is the celiac artery coming off the abdominal aorta, the superior mesenteric artery coming off the abdominal aorta going to the small intestine. Again, the superior mesenteric vein in yellow here. Uh, this is the adrenal gland, the small gland right here. And uh, sometimes you can see a little bit more clearly than what I see at the moment, a blue vein going to it, uh, an adrenal vein. This is the renal vein going to the kidney. And uh, of course, here's the renal artery coming off the abdominal aorta. Down here, very clearly, a lumbar artery coming off the abdominal aorta and a lumbar vein connecting up with the inferior vena cava. Right down here, the abdominal aorta ends by bifurcating or dividing into uh, a right and a left external iliac artery. Right next to it is the external iliac veins. And here, a little bit lower down, the right and left internal iliac arteries. Of course, the external, we can follow it into the leg. These are the femoral artery and femoral vein. And, uh, and of course, the, uh, they're carrying oxygenated blood down to the leg. And uh, the femoral veins bringing that blood low in oxygen back towards the heart, connecting up with the inferior vena cava. Yeah, I think